Audio desync or audio drift is an issue where what's happening on your video gets out of sync or doesn't happen at the same time as when the audio is actually happening. This is most common in videos of people's faces, be it from a camera, a webcam, or other recorded program where a face is talking but the words that are being said in the audio do not fully match up to the lip movements. This is an issue that has plagued, you plagued YouTubers for a very long time and I'm embarrassed to admit that it's been, a, it's been prevalent in my videos for a very long time. I've not had a whole lot of issues with it, but when I'm doing things related to webcams or laptop webcams or certain video recorders, it's been an issue in my workflow. Thankfully, I found a solution and have been running with it for a few months now and it works great, but you do need a little bit of technical know-how to fix it. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to fix most instances of audio video desync, be assuming that they're caused by the most common cause of it with mostly free software. There, there's at least two options that are totally free, along with a third one if you have a paid piece of software. Before we get started, you need to know why audio desync happens, because if it's present and it's not caused by this, uh, you may not be able to fix it with this method. Generally, audio video desync for YouTube related things is caused by variable frame rates. This means that instead of being locked to a solid 30, 24, 29.97, 60 FPS, your video actually fluctuates between 30, 60, 15, and 30, so on. Many, many webcam recording programs and many smartphone cameras use this as a means of continuing to maintain a high resolution even though it can't always keep up with the frame rate. Logitech webcams are very commonly plagued with this or either they just lock to 15 frames per second instead of trying for 30. Smartphone videos are very commonly plagued with this as well. It's actually a very easy fix once you know what you're doing. Now depending on what video editing platform you're using, you may not need to compensate for this at all. Many, quite a few of them, especially the consumer level ones, actually deal with variable frame rate just fine. A professional level option would be Sony Vegas Pro, a very expensive professional level video editing platform that uses a technique called Smart Resample, which basically, account, basically blends frames together whenever the frame rate does not match your project's frame rate. This is actually something most YouTubers tend to disable on all of their clips because it causes a ghosting effect whenever they mistakenly set their project to not the same frame rate as their source video. This is not necessary in most cases, but YouTubers still do it because they don't use the right frame rates. Well, if you're using a variable frame rate video in Sony Vegas, it always stays intact. So one solution to actually do it is if you're editing in a program like Adobe Premiere Pro, which does not handle variable frame rate at all, then you can just re-render the video file real quick out from Sony Vegas Pro to a Lagerith lossless compression format, an uncompressed AVI, a Cineform video file, something very high quality that won't you know, degrade the quality, but lock that frame rate and then import it into, Sony, or into Adobe Premiere and it works fine. An example of a program that does not like variable frame rates, of course, is Adobe Premiere Pro. Adobe takes a stance that, or at least in their forums, their official forum respondents, takes a stance that variable frame rate is not very common in the professional world whatsoever. This is a professional grade software. This isn't a professional problem. We're not gonna account for it. There's no reason for our software to deal with it. Stay put, be a consumer level person and use consumer software. Not a great way to treat your paying customers, but whatever. If you're using Adobe, Adobe Premiere Pro, if you have Sony Vegas or access to it, you can export it in that. Another option, which these next two are actually totally free. You can re-export it using a program called Handbrake. In Handbrake, you can bring in your video file, tell it the frame rate. By default, it'll say keep original. You don't want to do that because that may actually pick up the variable frame rate itself. You want to lock it to either 29.97 or 59.94 or whatever your frame rate is supposed to be. Uh, tell it CRF of 18. This is a constant rate factor and CRF of 18 and lower will pretty much maintain a constant perfect copy of the video file. If you go lower than 18, it's basically gonna make your converted video bigger than your original video without gaining any quality, of course. So I'd say stick with around 18 to 20. Uh, tell it CRF 18, export it to a new file, and import that into Adobe Premiere Pro and it's good to go. This is a free and open source platform or program that runs on any operating system. Very easy solution. Another way to transcode your files for free would be using the FFmpeg command line interface. This is a totally free and open source program that should work on just about any program, any platform, and I can confirm that the Linux and Windows commands are basically exactly the same. Now with this, you will use it to transcode your video files to Apple ProRes. It's a QuickTime format, but most major video editing programs would accept it. Now the command is a little complicated, so I will have it in the description below, so you can just basically copy paste it. Keep in mind with the command prompt, you cannot control V to paste, you must right click and hit paste. But basically you tell it, take file A, lock it to this frame rate, spit out file B, and it will 
transcode it for you. So check out the command in the description below. It's fairly straightforward. You just swap in your file names and your file directories and the frame rate, be it 24, 30, 25, 60, whatever. And you're good to go. But again, it is a totally free option. I assume there is a way to do it on Linux. If so, I may make a follow-up video if there's enough interest. But these are a few ways that you can compensate for variable frame rate footage in order to fix audio video desync issues. This is, again, common in webcams, smartphone videos, and I forgot to mention at the start, NVIDIA shadow play footage. Hope you enjoyed this too little guide tutorial i'm not sure what this exactly would be this video if you did smash the like button get subscribed for more awesome technology videos and leave me a comment in the comment section down below if you want any similar tutorials come check us out on patreon where you can contribute to our channel keep us doing what we're doing it means a lot to me i really appreciate all of our patrons that we've had since i've launched it in 2012 it's gone up and down we're at a low point at the moment but i'm going to revamp it add a lot new features that you can get from it and a lot more reasons to support us and you get early access to our videos, things like that. Subscribe. I'll see you in the next one.